Hello, during this demonstration, we're gonna show how to use the Cisco CSR 1000V together with Lisp Location ID Separation Protocol to enable a hybrid cloud extension between an enterprise and Amazon AWS. For more details on the CSR 1000V, please refer to cisco.com slash go slash cloud router. So the goals of the demo uh, is to first to demonstrate how the Cisco Application Policy Infrastructure Controller APIC Enterprise Module can be used to automate the deployment of the solution. The APIC EM extensions for the hybrid cloud solution based on Lisp on the CSR is currently on beta, so it's still under development. Everything else that will be shown on this solution is currently available and ready for production. The second goal of this demo is to show how a CSR 1000V together with Lisp allow an enterprise to have the same subnet stretched between Amazon AWS, Amazon Web Services, Cloud Services, and an enterprise data center. So during this demonstration, we're going to be changing between the PowerPoint and the actual lab. So the first let me describe what we have in, in the data center into, in the lab. So first, we have an enterprise data center where we have two uh, virtual machines. Uh, one VM has the IP address 1005.16. That's the VM that will be uh, move, moved to the cloud. 1005.60 is a VM that exists and will stay on the enterprise data center. We do have a VM that's running the APIC um, enterprise module. So the first thing that we, we are going to do is we're going to deploy a pair of CSR 1000V. I have already done that particular step. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you that at this point in time, both CSRs on the enterprise and the one deployed at Amazon AWS, they have only been configured with their IP address. So let me change here to the lab. So first, I'm gonna connect to the CSR on the enterprise. and then to the CSR and Amazon, AWS. Let me go ahead and log again with the right password. Okay, so the left hand side is the CSR on the enterprise. So what you see is that the only configuration that I have at this point in time on the CSR is its public IP address. So this could be a private IP address if you have a NAT on a particular firewall in between. In this case, we have uh, a public IP address. So that's the address that's going to be used to communicate with uh, AWS. No other configuration on the CSR, as you can see. Same on the CSR on Amazon AWS. No specific configuration. Only the WAN face interface configured with uh, GHCP. No other configuration uh, uh, shown here. So what I'd like to do now is to go back and we're gonna take logging into the APIC and then we're gonna discover both CSRs as well as push the configuration. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna log in into the APIC enterprise module. I'm gonna discover the devices. So the first device that I'm going to be discovering is the CSR 
located on, on Amazon. So put its public IP address, so 54148.15.153. I'll put the credentials. And I'm going to add that CSR. It's happening. We'll go ahead and add the second one, which is the one located on the enterprise. Two, three, seven. Type the credentials. So What's happening here is the APKM is going out there and talking to the devices. So refresh here, I'm gonna see that both the one located at Amazon, so 54 has been discovered, status is success, as well as the one located on the enterprise still uh, uh, in progress. That's the, the second one that we, we added. So the, what's happening here is the APKM is contacting the devices. It's discovering the devices interfaces, their configuration, and you can see that you now have both. The one located on the Amazon success, the one located on the enterprise is still uh, 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 finishing here. So process is just discovering the device take uh, uh, a few seconds sometimes a minute or two it's been now been both been discovered discovered so if I come here to the device inventory you see that both CSRs the one located on AWS as the one as the located on the enterprise are reachable now what I'd like to do is to go ahead and provision a cloud extension between the enterprise and the, the Amazon AWS. The only thing that I need to do is create new cloud extension. I'm gonna give it a name, could be price to AWS. You're gonna select what is the CSR that's used on the enterprise side. Give, you see, it gives the options of the device that had been previously discovered. You have to select what is the LAN interface in the case of the enterprise is Ethernet 2. Uh, what is the IP address of that interface? In our case 10.05.11 and the mask slash 24. In the case the VM on the enterprise is not using the CSR as a default gateway, you would type here default gateway for the VMs. In our lab the CSR is the default gateway. And then we're gonna select what is the WAN interface for the CSR on the enterprise. On the cloud, you see here that the previous CSR had disappeared, so we left with the CSR at AWS. Its LAN interface on AWS is gigabit two. The WAN interface is gigabit one. And then you need to provide what is the public IP address uh, at AWS. So 54.148.15.153. With that, we're gonna click on create cloud extension. What's happening here in the background is that the APKM is contacting both devices, both CSRs, and is configuring it based on the parameters that we have selected here. As you could tell, very simple, the parameters that we had selected, and then the APKM is actually configuring all the necessary uh, options, i.e. it's configuring Lisp, it's configuring uh, an IPsec tunnel between the routers, is creating a loopback interface, that uh, is the Lisp RLOC routing uh, uh, locator, and it's really an enabling host mobility on the LAN phase interfaces. So it, it's fully configuring uh, uh, the devices. As you can see here, our cloud extension has been successfully configured. You see here, 
uh, Enterprise to AWS Cloud Extensions created successfully. And let's now go back to the routers. So Enterprise and AWS. So here on the Enterprise side, if we run Show Run to check the configuration, you're going to see that the APIC has created a site-to-site -site VPN towards the IP address of the Amazons, this is the CSR located on AWS. Uh, it also has created an interface to be the locator, the Lisp R lock, as well as created a tunnel interface towards the CSR on AWS. It has also enabled configure the IP address on the LAN face interface as well as enabled Lisp mobility. Last but not least, it has fully configured Lisp on the enterprise CSR. So without any manual uh, uh, intervention, we now have a router that's fully uh, uh, functional with for the uh, cloud, hybrid cloud extension. Same here on AWS, we have configured the site-to-site -site VPN uh, between the, the from AWS towards the, the, the enterprise, created a loopback to be used as the locator, created a tunnel interface uh, with the towards the enterprise, created a uh, um, put an IP address on the LAN interface, enabled Lisp, and fully uh, uh, configured uh, uh, Lisp. Now, what I'd like to, to do is to show that the IPsec tunnel between the routers is actually up. So you see here, we have an interface, it's up, it's functional. The IPsec tunnel between the, the two is actually up. And you can see here that we have, we should have connectivity from the loopback of the enterprise router towards the loopback of the C, of the AWS CSR. So, ping here, two two two, source from my loopback zero. That is. Uh, 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 connectivity. So, from a Lisp perspective, um, we're going to see that we don't yet have the VMs registered on the on the the mapping database, as well as we have our map cache completely empty, completely clean on on both sides. So. Let me go back to the PowerPoint. So what has happened is I demonstrated is once a pick has configured the devices, the IPsec tunnel has been established. So at that point, the, what the enterprise is capable uh, is allowed to do is to basically to move to a code migration of VMs from the enterprise to the Amazon AWS VPC. And as you realize, has done that while keeping the same IP address. So in my case here, I have already created a VM on uh, AWS with that particular IP, and we have a VM on the enterprise data center on the 100560. Uh, uh, so from the end user perspective, for example, uh, 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 user located in a branch office, it's able to communicate with the server that now has moved to AWS exactly the same way as it's capable to connecting with a server that exists on the enterprise data center. So let me also show here to the demo the communication between the two VMs, the one that's still on the enterprise, 10.0560, and the one that has now moved uh, to the cloud. So first, let me go ahead and move here to the lab. So into the VM 
sitting on the enterprise. So that's the VM that's existing on the enterprise. So IP config. You see here it has 10.05.60. Let's see if it can ping its default gateway. So it's trying to ping uh, uh, the CSR, which is directly connected to. So it can ping its default gateway. Also, uh, what we see here is that now that particular VM.60 has been learned, detected by Lisp and registered with the mapping server. Likewise, if I come here to the VM, this is the VM located on Amazon. So with the IP address 10.05.16. And I connect to my default gateway 100511 uh, uh, in this case. What you see here is that the CSR, the mapping server, now has also learned about 16. So I know about the two VMs and their respective uh, uh, location. So, uh, final, what I'd like to do is to ping between the two VMs. So, first, let me show you that the cache, the mapping cache of the choose of the CSR on the enterprise as well as the mapping cache of the CSR at AWS are clean. They don't have an entry yet. Now let me start pinging towards the VM that has moved to uh, uh, Amazon. So 10.05.16. So we're gonna see it's normal that the first packet or two will be lost. And this is because it's the Lisp router is sending the map request and now it got the map reply. So by ping here, you're gonna see that there are no more uh, packet loss. There's only the first two packets that uh, are, are lost. And what has happened now is that the CSR on the enterprise now has an entry towards the VM that exists on Amazon AWS, a Lisp entry on the Lisp mapping cache. So it's sending Lisp encapsulated packets towards the CSR on AWS and vice versa. The CSR at AWS has an entry towards the locator of the CSR that exists on the enterprise. So that demonstrates that CSR together with Lisp is capable of providing a hybrid cloud uh, uh, extension solution where the same subnet is present on the enterprise as well as on AWS. So you can see here that the same subnet is present on both sides. And you saw that the same, that a VM, uh, VMs with the, in the different subnet, they existed on both, on the cloud as well as in the enterprise. So, it's not covered here on this demo, but if you had Lisp deployed on the branch office, the branch office could communicate directly with the cloud. For more information and for the full configuration of this demo, please refer to this white paper on cisco.com. Thank you.